So this week we've been thinking about the absolute self-centeredness of God and how God's self-centeredness is not like human selfishness in that negative sense of human selfishness. It's not like that. We looked at Psalm 150 and how God's self-centeredness is the theme of the whole Bible, not just Psalm 150. And then we looked at how God's self-centeredness is different from human selfishness because God deserves to be self-centered and we do not. God deserves, it is God's glory that we offer Him and we don't deserve that glory because none of the glory or the materials that make up that glory belongs to us. It's ultimately God's. And so God should receive it. And then we looked at how God's self-centeredness is not like our selfishness because God is triune. That God is constantly giving of himself to the other members of the triunity. And so it is not a simplistic, evil selfishness like ours. His self-centeredness is beautiful and loving. And that brings us to the final reason, final meditation today. Why God's self-centeredness is different from human selfishness. When we think of human selfishness, we think of, because we are all in the same level, when we think of human selfishness, we're talking, or self-centeredness, we're talking about taking advantage of other people. Doing things in such a way that I gain the most advantage, that I get on top of somebody else. That's how we picture selfishness, right? I had this... Um, Friend. I still have him, I think. I don't think we're on bad terms. Lost contact for, for it's been a while. But I knew him since he was very young. And every time we would get in the buffet line, I mean, this, this guy is a spiritual guy. He's a praise leader, and now he's a pastor. But every time we get in the buffet line, he would fight to be in the front. And he would not care about anybody behind him and pile his plate as high as he possibly could. And I talked to him one time and I said, hey, buddy, I think you are Christian in every sense except when you get in a buffet line. <laughs> and that was so true. Well, God's self-centeredness is not like that. Why? Because God is generous. We are not. God is kind. We are not. God is courageous. We are not. God is loving. And our selfishness is not. God's centeredness is generous, kind, and loving. Our selfishness is not. There you go. Very simply, simply put. There's a wonderful passage in the scripture that says this. I will save you and you will glorify me. God's glory is our salvation. God glories in forgiving us. That's another wonderful passage that says, My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts than your thoughts. In context, you know what he's talking about? He's not simply saying he's a lot smarter than us. What he's saying is, where you would not forgive, I will forgive. In a beautiful, radical passage in Hosea chapter 11, God says, I will not come in anger. I will not come in wrath. And he gives the reason. I am God and not man. If we were God in our selfishness and cruelty, we would destroy everything. God says, no, I'm God. At heart, I am generous. I am kind, I am patient, and I will stop at no length to come and get you. 
God's glory is our salvation. He delights to glory in pouring himself out for you and me as was so majestically displayed in his coming to us in his son, living the perfect life, dying the cruel, perfect death, rising again from the dead and taking us with him. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the pleasure of Think about his love. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. One more time. Preach to your soul. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about your love. We think about your goodness. This is what we were designed to do. This is what we were made to do. This is what we exist for. So, so often we have strayed from our purpose. We have been so easily distracted by the things we see, smell, touch, all these temporary distractions. Now you have drawn us back to what we were made for. We exist to display your beauty. Empower us to do it now. In Jesus' name, amen.